Hey, it's the Chief from the Dice Tower. We're going to be talking about Cauldron's Quest. Yes. Say that fast real quick. From Peaceful Kingdom. Peaceful Kingdom. And I like it because you get to move the hat and you get to also move the potions around the circle. Now. And I like winning. Cauldron's Quest is for four players. Supposed to be six and up. And I love the circular board. But let's go in and we'll take a closer look. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> All right, for Peaceable Kingdom, this game has one of the better themings, I think, in terms of the game following its theme. First of all, love the round board. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because almost all of my games are rectangular, but I love this round board. Let me see if I can just kind of, um, these sections just fold over kind of like a pizza pie. Um, but yeah, maybe that's it. I love the round board and the color spectrum is just really cool. So what are we doing? All right, the whole theme is that the evil wizard, this symbolizes the evil wizard, has cast a spell over the entire kingdom. And the only way we can break this spell as, as little, uh, I don't know, wizard guys, we've got to get the proper potions into the cauldron, hence cauldron, cauldron quest, and free the kingdom from the spell. So the first thing you're dealing with is you don't know you're going to randomly select um, three of these to go into the middle. So just, I have no idea, boom, boom, boom. And then you reveal them. And uh, you've got Aya Newt and you got like Horny Toad, Toad Frog and then you got, I don't know, Witch Hazel or something, I don't know. But, all right, you've got these other ones, a little mushroom, a little dragon's egg and a little bat wing. So it's real cool, themes right in. And my boy just thinks the eye is freaky. Hold on, the eye is freaky. Oh, freaky eye. He loves when the freaky eye is in there. Now, this tells you what different cauldrons you're going to have to march down the board and get into the pot. We've got a little cauldron pot here. So these little, these are supposed to be like goblets or something. They're all put down upside down and we don't know which ones they are. Now I'm gonna show you. Well, there you go. So you got the eye of Newt. I didn't know that. But for all six of the ingredients, three of which you've got to get, all the different ingredients are going to be represented at the ends of, of the board here. Again, I have Newt. Now, we wouldn't know that. So you're going to say, well, how in the world do you figure that out? Well, it starts by rolling the white dice. They have uh, action dice. And what happens is, is when you roll it, if you roll the cauldron and a corresponding number, you're going to get to move a cauldron four spaces. Um, you cannot move a cauldron into or a goblet into a cauldron until you revealed it. So I'm going to cover that in just one second. But just know that if I roll this little goblet and the number, I can choose any one of these. Hopefully I get some revealed and I'm going to march them down. Now you're going to start marching them down blindly at first. If you were to get the wizard and a number, you will simply move the wizard around the ring. He moves around clockwise. And it's important because if you get one of these cauldrons on the ring and the wizard either stops on it or moves past it, that cauldron is going to move back up to start. So he's basically running around the ring and moving things back up. Um, so you want to strategically kind of move these around. And when you're moving a cauldron, or, a, yeah, or a, a cup or a goblet, you can also move on the ring. And you're going to want to do that at times because there is a mechanism on here that is going to block off certain areas on the board. So if you get the same wizard's hat and a lightning bolt, you're going to go and pull randomly one of these hats. You're going to reveal it and you say, ooh, I've got an owl. And the owl is going to go here. And the wizard has now cast a spell on this row and nothing can move past the row down to the cauldron. So if I was moving this guy down, I'm not going to be able to move him there and I'm going to have to decide to move along the ring and then hopefully get on an open path. So as the game goes and the wizard wins, if he can get all of these paths, so you start revealing the stuff and these paths are going to get blocked off as you go, making it harder and harder to get your goblets down and into the cauldron. If all of these get blocked off, the wizard wins. So what happens if you get the lightning bolt and you get the cauldron? 
All right, very, very cool. This is where you get to pull out what's called the three magic dice. Now, first of all, these are kind of custom dice. They look kind of cool. They almost have like a smoke feel to them. I don't know, I like them. They endeared themselves to me. There's three things you can try to do with these cool smoke dice. The first one, and what you're gonna probably be wanting to do early on is what they call reveal the charm. Um, these goblets are called charms. And if I roll and I get all evens and it's kind of Yahtzee style, so I roll and say, okay, I've got two evens, I got another shot, boom, I got all my evens. I could have rolled one more time. I'm going to get to pick any one of these little, call, these little goblets or these charms and I'll be able to reveal it. And I go, well, okay, got a mushroom. Well, the mushroom is not one of the ingredients I need, so we're gonna just ignore that. We won't be marching that down if I were to get the little call or the little goblet and that, that and a four. I'm not moving it down, it's just staying there. Let's say I'd revealed this instead, I would have said, heck yeah, I knew, baby. All right, now I'm gonna be trying to move this thing down. All right, now let's say I had moved this down and I hadn't revealed it yet. It's not an ingredient I need, but I had it poised to enter. Now again, it do I don't need exact numbers, but I can't enter anything into the cauldron until it's revealed. So I go ahead and I, I reveal it and I go, oh my goodness, I don't even need this. It's the mushroom. Well, I have another option. When I get a chance, again, when I get a chance to roll these is where if I get a little lightning bolt with the little charm or with the uh, goblet, I can roll these and instead of going for the reveal, the reveal a charm, I can go for swap a charm. Swap a charm, charm works uh, completely opposite of reveal a charm. Instead of needing all evens, I need to roll all odds. And I get three chances to do that as well. So I'll roll through and if I get it, I can simply swap two different potion bottles. So I can be like, hello. All right, now I don't have to necessarily know what it is. In this case, I definitely wanted to do that swap, but that is the swap a charm. Now I have to declare what I'm gonna be doing with these dice before I roll it. So I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna to try to reveal that charm up there. I'm gonna be trying to roll evens. Hey, I wanna swap two charms. I'm gonna be trying to get odds. Or the last one is, I'm going to try to do what's called a superpower charm. Superpower charm just means that I've gotta roll and try to get these. This would be awesome because I'm trying to roll it so that they're over 12. If I get over 12, got it right off the bat, I can actually move one of these uh, charms six spaces and I can even break the block rule and move over an area that's been blocked. And if the wizards are, uh, uh, sorry, the wizard can block two, but you would be able to even move past a wizard. So I could go past the wizard, normally you can't. I could go past his blocker. And as long as it's revealed, I can take them all the way in. So if I was here, normally this is blocked off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, Eye of Newt is in. So don't, don't forget, you can move when you're moving these guys. You can move laterally around as well, as long as this guy doesn't get you, because he's gonna send you back up to a, to a little home spot here. But that's it. And you're fighting the timer of rolling the hat, the little magic hat with the lightning bolt. Now this can mean it's a little swingy. Uh, we played one, Bo and I did, where we rolled this thing so often the game was over in about five minutes. But he was like, Dad, we got to do it again. We just got unlucky. Now, you do get one like little charm breaker or spell breaker, and you can come in and say, you know what, I'm getting rid of one of these. So you got like one little freebie that can open something up at a key time, or if you know, hey, we're getting down, we're going to lose, you can break this out one time, spend it, and clear something out. Again, the theme just really works well with what's going on here, and I find the production values gorgeous here. Peaceful Kingdom, this is, to me, one of your best looking games that I've had from you. Beautiful artwork on the board. Um, I love the circular nature of it. It just feels good and the theme comes right through with the mechanics. Peaceful Kingdom does not put their designers' names on the boxes and I really wish they would. So Peaceful Kingdom, throw your uh, designers' names on there. They got Susan McKinley Ross who did Quirkle. She's done some games for them and uh, I think it'd be a selling point, but hey, that, gotta get out of this. Let's go, whoop, we can talk about this later. All right, we're back. Favorite things, my three favorite things, then we can do your three. So I love the circular board. The color palette's really nice here. I love the, it's a little bit random with the dice rolling, but I love the idea of the bits where you're trying to move these chalices or these cups into the center, and you're not sure exactly what you got, and 
The hat, albeit very difficult to actually hit you. I mean, it, you can get by the wizard pretty easy, but it's got a little bit of that random element, but the bits are very nice. The idea that you gotta reveal the chalices and then march them on down through. Uh, and you get a freebie. What do you like? What are your favorite three things? Well, I like them to go around the circle. The only danger is if the hat goes around, then and if they're on the circle, they have to go all the way back where they came from. Do you, and, do and you like, like the dice rolling? Well, not, it's okay, but I also like the hat moving and I like winning. And you like winning. Yeah, who doesn't like winning? It's a cooperative game, so you're gonna win or you're gonna lose together. The only, way, the only way to lose is to get all of these tokens turned over when they're on these, but they have to be matching. Correct. If, if they're not all covered and you have all of the ingredients together, you pick three ingredients, but if all the ingredients together, then you win. But... Me and him win a lot often. Now, what are you wearing on your head? My monkey. You got a monkey on your head? Did I, didn't I already tell them that I'm the monkey junior today? I don't think you said you're a monkey junior. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll introduce myself the monkey junior instead of the chief junior. There you go. And I'm the chief. Whoop. Hey. See you guys later. Dice Tower. Bye-bye. Love ya. Well, I don't love you, just I like people playing this game. There you go. Well, I just like you a lot. See you guys. Bye. That was just embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. You're like, I love you. I play it off good. Well, let's see the video. Whoa, Karina, be careful. It's cool. Kyle with my pinky. <laughs> All right, can you put the hat on there, Bo? Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.